All right, before we get into factory farming and the harsh and sad reality that a lot of animals face and how it also impacts the environment and our health, we have we have a new guest here. We have we have four time NBA champion and vegan and advocate and talk show host John yeah, Sally. I was here. You just wasn't you wasn't talking to me. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> like, that's I, not true. You can't miss me. I just faded you. in. I had to put a gray shirt on just so you would <laughs> see that I was here. And you you came at a time where it's gonna get it's gonna get um, tough. Yeah. Because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start with some footage in just a moment of of as I said earlier the harsh realities of factory farming. But then we're gonna have some heartwarming footage. We're gonna play a game. We're gonna learn a little bit more about you. So stay tuned for that. But before we get into this video, I just want to warn the viewers: it is graphic. It is very hard to watch. But I think it's important that people watch it because ignorance yeah. is is not bliss. <clears throat> and I think it's necessary to be informed, Are you especially. The debate? Oh, it's. That it's is worse. really hard to watch. That, that is worse. very hard yeah. to watch. That's 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 a whole n another discussion. At least this would be the truth. Yeah, you'll have to come yeah. back when we talk debates. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this footage. I think it's it's just under a minute. So please, please, please do everything you can to watch it, and then we will discuss. The birds are dragged through an electrified vat of water, which renders them paralyzed, but not necessarily unconscious. They are then pulled across a blade, which slices their throats, causing blood to pour from their necks. Cows too sick or injured to stand are called downers and are often left to slowly suffer and die from their injuries. Calves on dairy farms are dragged away from their mothers and violently killed, all so that humans can have the milk instead. Piglets who become sick or injured or who are not growing quickly enough are killed. Common killing methods include being slammed head first into the ground. Pigs are knocked in the head with a steel rod, hung upside down and have their throats slit. Proper stunning condemns many pigs to having their throats slit while they are fully conscious and suffering. Oh my God, I've seen footage like this a, a gazillion mm. times and it's still just, still so hard so to watch. There's one aspect, there, there are two great things about what we just saw. Okay. One, it inspires us to work harder. You know, like when I watch that footage, I'm like, this is my life's work. You know, like, the other thing is, I was talking to a friend of mine who worked at um, Humane Society, and this might sound a little odd, when I watch animals being killed, my response is actually to say thank you, because it's the only mercy that that animal's ever gonna be shown. Like once it's dead, it doesn't suffer anymore. And I'm not advocating killing, but I'm saying like, when I see a cow or a pig and it's dying, I'm like, finally, the suffering's over. You know, so it's the only good thing that can come from that. Yeah, it's so hard. It's so hard to watch. But I have to believe that because uh, we were all meat eaters at one point. I have to believe that um, the majority of meat eaters out there they don't they're not aware of these harsh realities. So it's so important to have footage like this. That's what turned me into vegan. So mm -hmm. Nathan, with Mercy for Animals, you guys work with a lot of this investigative footage, That's right. and you use it to educate people and inform. So how how hard is it to get this footage? Number one and number two. Are you guys stopped by the meat in industry? Because I can imagine that they don't want this footage to get out. Yeah, that's right. They don't want people to see how their food is being produced because as you saw, it's horrific. It goes completely against what most Americans' ethics and values are, which is not to support cruelty to animals. We've done over 50 undercover investigations into egg farms, dairy farm, pig farms, slaughterhouses. Every single time, without exception, that we enter these facilities, we see animals locked in cages where they can't turn around, having their throats so that while fully conscious, mutilated without painkillers. This is the standard for the industry. Sometimes people see this footage and they want to believe that this is the bad apple, this is the exception. That's not the case. It is becoming more difficult to do these investigations. The meat industry is pushing what are called ag-gag laws that make it a crime to take video or photographs inside of factory oh, farms. Oh, that's bullshit. And in some, that... in some situations, the penalty for taking a photograph of someone abusing an animal on a factory farm is harsher than actually abusing the animals. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's outrageous. And John, uh, we, we didn't get to, so the viewer knows, um, how long have you been vegan? And I think for you, a lot of people may be surprised that a professional athlete mm. is a vegan. So if you could talk about all of that and then also please reflect on the video. Well, I, it's been eight years now. I was a lying vegetarian since 91. 
<laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, you vegetarians that say, I just eat fish, you're not a vegetarian. And, and then I would have turkey and, and, or, or shrimp. So I was a lying vegetarian. So when I became a vegetarian, I would say a real vegetarian, which is a vegan, I would say about 10 years ago, but I became a vegan eight years ago where I became more conscious of what I do, how it affects things. And that's really what it, that part of veganism. And for you, it's also been about health, right? Because yeah. you're a big health and wellness advocate. Right. So I became a health coach, and then I, and now I have a, a system that I will be you know, talking about right here on Young Turks. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, making more health coaches because I realize, like, when I'm around these two guys, you can hear Moby speak and whatnot, and you, you see it. But then when, like I told him, when I started seeing that he started taking processes in his life, not just like some people preach it and live another way. He Like like he said, his life's work. And then Lives Nathan, by example. Like I literally, my hair was like Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> and then this happened. Yeah. <laughs> so see, me and Moby yeah. both try to be like Nathan <laughs> in so many ways. But that mentality of, what can I do to be the best human I could be? So I yeah. decided with Health Coach Institute to make people more conscious, teach them. Right. Not just, not just about food and what, like literally teach them. And then when you become conscious, you help the next person. After, if pay, pay it forward. And before we get into some of the, some mm -hmm. really sober, sobering statistics, you mentioned um, some of them in regard to factory farming and the environment, but just your health. I mean, yeah. there's, there's so many studies out there that show that by adopting a plant-based lifestyle, you increase your lifespan. Yeah. It, it helps you fight against disease and cancer and you're less susceptible to develop those diseases. You become more compassionate. You become more compassionate. You're happier. But um, so that's one benefit. Let's take a look at some of the graphics that go through the, the benefits um, when it comes to the environment. Adopting a plant-based diet saves eight plus animals a month, 100 plus animals per year, 300 plus animals in three years. So that has to do with uh, saving animals, which is, those are, that's, that's just you adopting a plant-based diet, you are saving animals' lives. Now, livestock and their byproducts account for at least 32,000 million tons of CO2 per year, or 51% of all worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. Now, you compare that to transportation, because a lot of people will say, oh, what about the pollution? Uh, the pollution from transportation is, is much more of a, a greenhouse gas emission. Actually, road, rail, air, and marine only accounts for 13%. You compare that with the 51%. Oh, this is a good one, because you may have seen a number of articles out there that will criticize a plant-based diet because of the water consumption used to produce mm -hmm. almonds. So let's compare the water <laughs> used to produce almonds to 240 uh, eggs per year, 12,985 gallons of water. That's in comparison to 736 almonds per year. That's 736 gallons of water. And then 144 hamburgers per year. That's 102,960 gallons of water. That's what the average American eats. And that's just looking at at a pound of beef. That's just looking at hamburger meat, not to think about how much water it takes for a pound of, of chicken, of turkey, of a carton of eggs. So I think it's important to push that because I have just been wanting to pull my hair out when I read these articles that talk about water consumption and almonds. Well, but then they don't. That's why John and I are bold. Yeah, we've we been pulling our hair out. Don't do it. <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things that's been frustrating when we're talking about these statistics, it's like the meat industry will sometimes grudgingly say, oh yeah, it's about a thousand gallons of water to make one pound of beef. I'm like, no, that's the amount of water fed to the cow. Mm. What about the amount of water that goes to the alfalfa, the soy, the corn? What about the amount of water that's used to like hose down the feedlots? Like it's closer to 10,000 gallons of water for one pound of beef. And the same thing with CO2 emissions. You're not talking about methane. Methane is 10 times more powerful of a climate change gas than CO2. And even the beef industry will say like, oh yeah, it's like 20% of climate change. They downplay the it. That's direct emissions. You're not talking again about all the, like the rainforest being decimated to um, either yeah. create grazing land for livestock or to grow pro you know, crops for livestock. So there are these knock on consequences and what, I know that, I mean, I love TYT mm -hmm. and I love how staunchly progressive it is. I'm amazed that there's any progressive on the planet who supports animal agriculture. I yeah. agree. You know, it's like being progressive and supporting animal agriculture is like being a lung cancer activist and smoking.
Absolutely. We have a great graphic to go along with what you just mentioned with animal agriculture. And Don't you the, love Moby? I love I Moby. Do. Trust, I've always loved Moby. <laughs> now he's here. Man. Let's look at the graphic. Animal agriculture yeah. is responsible for up to 91% of Amazon destruction. Earth's rainforests are being destroyed at the rate of 1.4 acres per second worldwide. When people yeah. think about what's happening to endangered species, people think about rhinos, they think about elephants. and. It's, it's hard to think of what we can do in our everyday life to help those animals, but when you look at how many animals species are being completely wiped out, it's because of the destruction of the rainforest, and that is directly associated with the consumption of animal products. So there's so many things that are going on in our world that seem out of reach for us to have an impact on, but climate change, uh, the decimation of endangered species, all of these things, we can help be part of the solution every time that we sit down to eat. That's so powerful. And then also, I think a lot of people may be unaware of uh, a lot of the workers yeah. that work in these yeah. factory farms. We have some really powerful quotes that may give you a better idea of what they go through and the conditions that they have. So a job at a factory farm has one of the largest turnover rates in America, exceeding 95 to 100 yep. percent annually. Also, statistically, these workers come from low income families with yep. approximately 72 percent born outside the U.S. and 68 percent born in Mexico. The poor working conditions, you talked about that. Yep. Um, long hours, They because a lot of them are undocumented, yep. they aren't able to unionize. So, of mm -hmm. course, they get taken advantage of. And then also a lot of worker death, a lot of injuries. According to the CDC, there were 20.2 deaths per 100,000 workers. Workers. And then there are a number of injuries, a number of unreported injuries, because they're afraid to ruffle any feathers because even though there's a high turnover rate, they don't want to lose their job, right? Well, in, in Tyson Foods, the largest poultry company in the U.S., they publicly admit that they have one amputation per month at their slaughterhouses because of worker um, accidents. Unbelievable. That's Tyson. So somebody loses a finger, a hand, an arm, a toe, an yeah. ear, a nose. Yep. Yeah. Every month, and then it gets ground sense. up, in the, and and they can't find it. Possibly, but they still well, pack it. Possibly, maybe. You so I'm just saying. I'm not <laughs> saying that's what happens. I'm just saying <laughs> sometimes <laughs> all you people eating the sausage may have a finger of a Mexican dude with a ring on it. It's pretty much a given. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then also the no regulation, as I stated, it affects a, a lot of the neighboring communities. So because the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency doesn't regulate the air and water pollution created by factory farms, they are allowed to spray this waste on surrounding lands that are usually near people's homes. The toxins and harmful gases released from this waste cause people to suffer from respiratory infections, headaches, and can even cause blue baby syndrome if it enters the waterways. And what's sad is many of these communities, I read their pleas, many of these communities yeah. will come together, they'll call for regulation, it falls on deaf ears, but then because of their financial situation, they can't move. So yeah. they're left to endure the the terrible health conditions that could impact on, on their family. Or be afraid of Zika. Yeah. Like in Florida, they're going to tell you about Zika. But they, mm -hmm. you had to just tell me yeah. about this. Right. Right? They're afraid of Zika. They're afraid of everything in the world that they can put on certain networks to make you afraid. But that's so you don't pay attention. To this. It's like this, like the one time somebody said, you don't, they put sports on and they make it a big important thing. So you're not paying attention to the fact that they're killing you. Oh, wow. Um, so if, if any of this footage in our conversation has impacted you, I, I encourage you to learn more. Go to mercyforanimals.org. You'll find all the information there. But And donate. And donate. Believe me, all the money goes directly to fighting for animal rights. And then soon we're going to have some heartwarming footage. So you can look forward to that. Puppies.